Are you ready for a tricky logo test? I've got one for you to test your observation skills. Don't forget to keep your score and share your results in the comments below. Okay, at first, I'll be showing you two logos. One is correct and the other is fake. You'll have to tell me which one is the right one, okay? Let's go then. What about this logo of Samsung? Yes, of course, it's this one. Next up, Dota 2. Even if you aren't a gamer, you probably know it well enough to recognize the right logo. Yes, that's the one on the right. What about L'Oreal? Correct, it's this one. Boston Red Sox, what's the correct logo? Yes, it's the one on the right. I bet you've seen it lots of times. It'll help you find the Windows logo. Here it is. Did you get it right? Chromium, a web browser. What do you say? Yes, it's this one. Concentrate, it's getting harder. Can you remember the real logo of the New York Giants, a football team? It's the one on the left. Abar, an Italian racing car brand. Which logo is it? This one, of course. Valentino, a luxury brand. Can you spot the correct logo? Right here, this one. Great job, let's move on. Tissau, a watch brand. Where is the original? It's the one on the right. Think hard and find Statler. That's the one. This social networking service used to be extremely popular. I'm talking about MySpace. Can you find its logo now? It's this one. Can you recognize the correct logo of San Francisco's Golden State Warriors? Yes, of course, it's this one. Next up, Isu. What's the correct logo? Yes, that's the one. This one might be a bit hard, but I believe in you. Where is the correct World Health Organization logo? It's this one. Did you get it right? Now let's change the task a bit. I'll be showing you logos and you'll need to recognize them. Here's the first one. Do you remember what brand it is? Correct, it's Huawei. Any ideas here? It's Tiffany & Co. I'm sure you know this one, so what is it? That's New Balance. Easy peasy, what is this? That's Uber. Another simple one, what do you say? Google Earth. Okay, do you know what this G stands for? It's The Guardian, a famous British newspaper. What about this one? It's Maserati, a car brand. Great job. What are your thoughts? Another car brand, a German one this time. It's Maybach. This can be tough, but I believe in you. Any ideas? That's Sumitomo, a tire manufacturer. This one is very famous. It's Tom Ford. Any ideas? Yep, it's Grammarly. That's something you probably know. UNESCO, 
the United Nations agency that promotes peace and security. So, do you recognize it? It's Smug Mug. What is this brand? That's Longines, a luxury watchmaker. Something a bit harder for you. What do you think? It's Herbal Essences, a hair care brand. Hmm, just a blue circle? Can you figure out what it is? That's USA Today. Does it ring a bell? It's Amnesty International. Do you recognize this brand? It's Royal Cannon, a pet food brand. Another simple one. What's your call? Blackberry. What about this one? It's Yamaha. Did you figure it out? This app used to be an absolute hit for a while. What is this? It's Clubhouse. What about this logo? Do you know what they sell? Watches. It's Breguet. This one is trickier. What is it? It's Digital Trends, a tech news website. This might not be obvious for everyone, but give it a try. What do you say? It's Chicago Bears, an American football team. Do you know this logo? It's Tidal, a music, podcast, and streaming service. What about this one? Does it look familiar? That's Badoo, a dating app. Another logo you likely know well. What is this? That's Safeway. Any thoughts on this one? This is Jimmy Dean. This might look hard, but it's a well-known brand. Burt's Bees. Can you drag it out of your memory? Lint, a chocolate producer. What about this horse? That's Denver Broncos, a football club. It sure looks cool, but what is this? That's Lincoln Park. How about this one? Yeah, that's Legendary Entertainment, a movie production company. Any ideas? Flashbacks? That's Lady Bird Books, a book publisher. Not everyone knows it, but it's kind of famous. It's the logo of the World Digital Library. Can you recognize it? That's Tyson Foods. Okay, how about this rabbit? Where does it come from? It's PETA, an animal rights organization. Can you recognize this logo? It's New York Mets, a baseball team from New York. This logo is very famous, but will you recognize it? That's Cargill, a global food corporation. Let's see if you know this one. That's FEE, or the Foundation for Environmental Education. And now, another type of task again. This one is the hardest. I'll be showing you little pieces of logos, and you'll need to recognize them. Do you think you'll manage? Let's check. Here's the first one for you. Any guesses? It's Nestle. Okay, just a little piece, but it's not as hard as it seems.
Just mirror it and you'll get Motorola's logo. Do you recognize this face? What are your thoughts? This is the logo of the Boston Celtics, a basketball team. A trickier one for you. It's Mental Floss, an online magazine. This one is easy to recognize. So what do you say? Of course, it's Alfa Romeo, a car brand. What about this one? Can you tell? That's Macy's. Does it ring a bell? Think about it. Bastille, a pop rock band. It's a very famous company. That's Hasbro. What about this piece? That's Los Angeles Angels, a baseball club. Just several letters for you to recognize the whole logo. Do you think you can do it? That's Greenpeace. What about this one? Can you guess it? That's The Doors, a music band. You're likely to recognize this one easily. Let's see. That's Vans. Look, this one's so cool. What do you think it is? That's Fortnite, a computer game. This is one of the hardest puzzles in this test. Here's your piece. What do you say? It's Partners in Health, an organization that works to strengthen health systems. What's your call? That's Urban Dictionary. So, how did you fare? Let me know how many points you've got. Brandon is the brightest student in his college. The next evening after graduation, he received this mysterious letter. The note said, We have a job for you. He turned the note around and saw this message. Brandon cracked this encoded puzzle right away. What about you? Brandon's job interview will take place in a greenhouse at midnight. Brandon arrived at the meeting point. He looked around and saw a gardener lying unconscious on the floor. Brandon called the police. Experts said that someone had poisoned the gardener. Brandon called three people and questioned what they were doing today. Allie, the gardener's assistant, said, Today was my day off. I've spent all my time at a pool party with my friends. The gardener's wife, Lily, said, Oh my, I can't visit him immediately. I'm on a business trip in Rome. And the gardener's boss, Dan, said, I had lunch with him today, and he looked perfectly fine. Brandon spotted who was lying right away. What about you? Lily is lying. Take a look at her hotel window. Can you see the Eiffel Tower? She's not in Rome, but in Paris. After solving this case, Brandon received a message. Congratulations, you've passed the first stage. See you in the basement. Brandon went downstairs and faced this combination lock. Now he needs to open the door to move on to the next level of his job interview. Can you help him crack the code? All right. Take a look at the note near the door. It's a hint. The correct password is opinion. Brandon entered a huge office and saw this guy. He said, Nice to meet you, Brandon. I'm Mr. Green. My wife and I have six sons. Each son has one sister. Can you count all members of my family? Brandon nailed it right away. What about you? Nine, Mr. Green, Mrs. Green, six sons and one daughter. The daughter is a sister to all six sons. 
Brandon's next task is to solve a robbery case. Last night, someone smashed a window in the local bank office to break in. Oh, the cleaner was inside, so he ran to call for help. He saw that the robbers had taken the money and busted the door open to escape when he got back. He tried to clean the mess, and some glass fragments got stuck in his sleeves. Brandon looked over the crime scene. He knew for sure that the cleaner was lying. But what exactly gave him away? The window glass? The door? Or the cleaner's appearance? The door frame was broken outwards, indicating that whoever was inside broke out, which fits the story. The glass can shatter in all directions. Still, not enough evidence to prove that the cleaner's lying, but his arms are covered in glass. He did say that he was cleaning up, but those tiny shards indicate he was standing very close to the window when it was broken. And, probably, he was the one who had smashed it. Busted. After solving this case, Brandon received the next task, to make this equation correct by moving just one matchstick. Do you have any ideas? In fact, there are three possible answers. Okay, let's see. 8 minus 4 equals 4. 5 plus 4 equals 9. And 0 plus 4 equals 4. Mr. Green offered Brandon to look through some crime scene photos. Brandon asked him, in which one of these buildings is the new crime scene? Mr. Green said, the closest one. All right. Can you help him spot which of these buildings is closer? This building has blocked out the pattern of railings on the right-hand building. Therefore, it's closer. And if you look very attentively, you can also see the satellite dish obscuring the other building. To accomplish the next task, Brandon needs a laptop. Can you help him enter the correct password? Here's a clue. It's a five-letter word that includes two different vowels and three similar consonants. It's so strong that it can spoil your entire work. Can you guess the word? It's an error. Brandon saw this picture on the screen. His task is to spot which direction the car is moving, left or right. Can you help him? Neither right nor left. The car isn't moving because it doesn't have any wheels. Here's the next task for Brandon. Mr. Green bought a phone for $100. Then he sold it to Sam for $125. After a year, he bought it back from Sam for $150. After using it for a month, he sold it back to Sam for $175. Can you calculate if this entire deal was profitable for Mr. Green? In the first deal, Mr. Green made a profit of $25 from Sam. Mr. Green got a $25 profit again from Zach in the second deal. Therefore, the entire deal was profitable for Mr. Green, and he made a total profit of $50. Brandon woke up in a forest. He wandered around for a while and met these three ladies. They all claimed that they had gotten lost in the woods two months ago. Can you spot any liars among them? The easiest way to solve this task is to look at their hair. The first lady has long blonde hair with brown roots, which means that she hasn't been to the hairdresser for a while. The third lady has naturally black hair, which has probably been growing out the same way. But the second lady has a fresh haircut and green colored roots, which means she has recently visited a hairdresser. Therefore, she's probably a criminal trying to blend in with the others to hide from justice. After a short walk, Brandon found a huge villa in the forest. The owner of this villa was just found unconscious. Brandon has to examine the crime scene and determine the possible suspects. Ooh. 
three housekeepers, Mary, Wendy, and Jane, were the only people who were around at the time when the owner felt sick. What? Strangely, they all had red stains on their hands. Hmm. Mary said, These stains on my outfit are just red paint. I was painting the benches in the garden. Wendy said, My stains are from the nail polish. And Jane said that she had spilled grape juice on her uniform. Can you spot any liars? Take a closer look at the grape juice Jane is holding. As you can see from the label, it's a white grape juice. That drink wouldn't leave a red stain. Also, all benches in the garden are blue, which means Mary had lied. After lunch, Brandon fell asleep. He woke up and found himself in jail. He began to look for a way out and found three doors. The first exit is guarded by angry dogs. They haven't eaten for nine months, so they're very hungry. The second exit is guarded by a family of dragons. And finally, a group of guards is waiting behind the third door. No prisoner can escape from them. Which exit should Brandon choose? He should choose the first way. If the dogs haven't eaten for nine months, they're probably too weak to stop Brandon from escaping. Brandon and Mr. Green entered an elevator to get to the final step of the interview. Brandon spotted three odd things about this elevator right away. What about you? The eighth floor is missing. The mirror reflects Brandon, but it doesn't remember Mr. Green. The sign says that this elevator's weight limit is zero pounds. Mr. Green took Brandon to his office and showed him his jewelry collection. Mr. Green said, I have one final puzzle for you. If you solve it, you're hired. When I was your age, I collected white gems in the mountains and brought them home every evening. When I've accumulated enough gems, I decided to sell them. The local jeweler said, I'm ready to buy your gems. How many stones do you have? So I began to calculate. I bought a huge box that contained three mini boxes, and two of them had another mini box inside. So if the huge box can hold 50 gems, how many blue gems did I sell to the jeweler? Brandon nailed it and got the job. What was his reply? Mr. Green was collecting white gems, so he couldn't sell any blue gems to the jeweler. Detective Tina received an emergency call from the local museum. Someone had stolen an exclusive scarab brooch from ancient Egypt. First of all, Tina checked all security cameras. This is what she found. Can you spot the thief just by looking at these two pictures? See this guy? He's holding an open paper cup in the first image, but in the second image, the cup has a lid. The guy hid the stolen brooch in his paper cup. Detective Tina hurried to the crime scene. When the brooch disappeared, the museum security system locked all visitors inside the building. But the guards didn't find the suspected person among the visitors. How did he escape? Have you guessed? Take a look up at the ceiling. See the shoe prints on the statue? The thief climbed this sculpture and escaped through the window on the roof. Tina went to the roof to search for some clues. Can you see any? The thief left the cup on the roof. There's a coffee shop name written on it. Bright Cup. Tina can visit this place and check the security cameras. Tina arrived at the coffee shop, located just nearby the museum. Unfortunately, they didn't have security cameras, so Tina questioned the staff. Kelly, the barista, said, Sorry, I don't know this guy. I'm just trying to do my job. Mike, the manager, said, This face looks familiar, but I'm not sure where I saw him. And Phil, the guard, said, Sorry, never saw him. You can trust me, I have a perfect memory for faces.
Tina knew for sure that one of them had lied. Can you spot who exactly? Kelly, look at her iPad. There's an incoming call from her boyfriend. Take a closer look at the contact photo. It's our thief. Therefore, Kelly is an accomplice in the crime. Tina told Kelly, I'm afraid we should continue this conversation at the police station. But Kelly ran away through the backyard. Tina followed her and ended up in a dark basement. She got lost and found these three cages. The first cage is covered with fire. There are huge ice cubes all over the second cage. And the third cage is full of venomous scorpions. Tina has to choose one of them to get to the surface. Can you help her choose the safest option? The cage with the ice cubes. She can get cold, but it's still safer than the other two cages. The police caught Kelly and brought her to the station. During interrogation, Kelly told Tina four facts. First of all, this guy's name is Alex. Secondly, he's my ex-boyfriend. We don't get along anymore. We went to the same college and met in history class. And finally, I don't know why he'd stolen this stupid brooch. One of the facts is false. Can you guess which one? The fourth one. Look at Kelly's tattoo. It's identical to the stolen brooch. She definitely knows something about the stolen item. Kelly confessed that the thief might be hiding in an abandoned castle site outside the city. Tina went to check it out. But anyone who wants to reach the castle should go through this tangled maze. Can you tell which one of these four paths will bring Tina to the castle? The first path leads to the pond with crocodiles. The third one leads nowhere. And the fourth way goes back to the beginning. So Tina should choose the second path. Tina entered the castle and saw a room full of ancient artifacts. She spotted the thief right away. What about you? Can you see him? This mummy is holding a cell phone. Alex ran away to the basement and Tina followed him. Unfortunately, the door behind her slammed shut and she got stuck. Can you help her break the code to escape? A calendar on the door says, you force heaven to be empty. If you read the sentence again, you're going to hear a seven-digit code. U, four, seven, two, B, M, T. In the next room, Tina got stuck in another trap. The creepy voice explained, If you press the right button, I'm going to let you go. But if you choose the wrong one, you'll stay here forever. You've only got one chance to escape. Good luck. Which button opens the lock? Have you guessed? She should pick the black button. This picture on the wall is a hint. The rainbow contains all colors except for black. Tina got out of the trap and entered a room full of old furniture. She noticed three odd details about this room right away. What about you? There are books in this burning fireplace, but they don't burn. Take a look at this painting on the wall. This lady's winking. And the reflection in this mirror doesn't match the room at all. Tina found Alex near these underground gates leading to an ancient underground city. He explained that the scarab brooch hid a secret key, but there are four different locks on the gates. The guys only have one attempt to choose the right one. Which lock should they pick?
The fourth lock is the only perfect match for this key. The guys opened the gates and entered the city. Alex had a map, so he ran away to find the treasures and left Tina alone. She looked around and noticed a three-way road pointing to the north, west, and east. Tina didn't know where to go. Suddenly, she saw a lady. The local citizens always reply truthfully, but they answer only one question if they're talking to a stranger. What should Tina ask to figure out the right direction? She should ask, if the right direction is not the east, is it west? Here's why. There are three possible answers. 1. Yes, west is correct. 2. No, east is the right direction. 3. Neither one nor the other. Tina should go north. Or, Tina might just ask the name of this lady and then introduce herself. This way, they won't be strangers anymore, and Tina would be able to ask as many questions as she needed. Tina went north and finally found the entrance to a cave with treasures, but the door has a combination lock. Can you help Tina figure out the code? Take a look at these figures. The number corresponds to the sum of intersection points. Therefore, she needs to calculate the number of points in the last figure. And voila! The four-digit code is solved. Inside the caves, Tina met a dragon. It said, I'm gonna let you in if you can crack my riddle. I'm gonna let you in if you can crack my riddle. I'm quite hot, but if you remove the first two letters, I become too cold. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is spice. When we take away the first two letters, it turns into ice. To find the treasures, Tina has to walk through this round maze. She only has 10 seconds to choose the correct way. Can you help her out? Here's the easiest way. Tina found three doors in the center of the labyrinth. Each door leads to treasures. But each way also hides some danger. The first path is filled with poisonous gas. There are thousands of toads and bugs behind the second door. They crawl all over the floor and walls. And a hungry lion is hiding behind the third door. Which way should Tina choose? The second way, although bugs and toads can be gross, they're not dangerous. Tina took the treasures and headed home. Suddenly, she met Alex. Tina decided to trick him and offered him a deal. If you manage to solve my puzzle, I'm going to give you 100% of the treasures. But if you fail, you'll get nothing and go to jail. Here's the riddle. Move just one match to point this giraffe in a different direction. Alex failed to crack this riddle. What about you? Here's the correct answer. Pretty easy, huh? Emma came to the office on Monday and found out that someone had deleted an important report from her computer. She knew that in the company, there were three people who would be happy if she lost her job. Emma loved reading detective novels and even wanted to become a private detective when she was younger. That's why she knew she had to question the suspects. Laura, Emma's colleague, said, I've just arrived. Phew, the weather is awful. Such a downpour. Why are you asking me? Thomas, the accountant, answered, I was out getting coffee and I just returned. And Elisa, a new employee, said, I had a meeting with a client in a cafe. I've just come back to the office. Who might have anything to do with Emma's report? Eliza, pay attention to the suspect's feet. 
Thomas's and Laura's shoes are wet. They got caught in the rain, but Eliza's high heels are perfectly dry. She must have lied about going out to meet with a client. Emma found this strange. To confirm her suspicions, she decided to watch Eliza. But the very next day, the girl disappeared, along with some very important documents. Emma's boss asked her to help him return the documents. He didn't want to inform the police yet. Despite all, Emma was happy. She could fulfill her dream of becoming a detective. Eliza's computer was protected with a password. After an hour of failed attempts, Emma finally noticed a piece of paper on the floor under Eliza's desk. She picked it up. I'm made up of two words joined together. I'm a dish. My first half is a famous genre. My second part is a grain. What am I? The answer to this riddle might be the password, but what is it? Popcorn. Emma managed to start the computer, and soon enough, she found a map with some coordinates. Time for some action. The map led her to a modern building. It was a gym. She entered and asked the receptionist about Eliza, but the woman refused to tell her anything unless she brought a guest pass. Once inside, Emma decided to explore the place. At one point, she entered the showers for ladies. She immediately realized something was off. But what exactly? See that man reflected in the window? Who is he, and what is he doing here? Emma was about to run out of the showers when everything went black. When she woke up some time later, she realized she was in a small room without windows. There was a door with a combination lock. In her hand, she was clutching a note. Spelled forward were those rodents that terrify you, but what you need is spelled backward. You can't touch it, but you can see it at night. What is the password? The rodents the note speaks about are rats. Then the word Emma needs is star. The girl managed to open the door. She rushed out of the room but stopped abruptly. She saw a large armchair. A man was sitting in it. It was the man from the showers at the gym. Here you are, he exclaimed cheerfully. I admit that at first I wanted to bring your boss down, but I've changed my mind. I want to play now. If you crack all my riddles, I'll give you the documents and let you go. Emma had nothing to do but agree. The man said, See, I have a room filled with gold. Once, three thieves sneaked into that room, but only two of them walked out. After they left, the room was empty. So, where was the third thief? The third criminal was in a wheelchair. He didn't walk. He rolled out of the room. Good job, the man shouted and pressed some buttons on the armrest of his chair. Emma screamed as she felt herself falling through the floor. It was pitch dark in the basement. Suddenly, a torch on the wall lit up. Emma saw three doors. Behind the first door, there was a dense jungle full of dangerous creatures. Behind the second door, there was a gigantic fire-breathing dinosaur whose breath could burn through any kind of material. And behind the third door, there was a lake filled with ice water. The water was so cold, it needed just a few seconds to freeze literally anything. Which door should Emma choose? She should walk through the second door. Even if dinosaurs were still around, they wouldn't be able to breathe fire. It was the correct decision. The dino turned out to be a skillfully made statue. But there was just one door leading out of the room, and it was locked too. Ah! Emma was starting to get impatient. Luckily, there was another note with a hint. There were drawings on it. A banana, a sunflower, a rainbow, and an apple. Emma thought for a while, then pressed four numbers on the panel near the door. The code was correct, and the door opened. What numbers did the girl press?
1371. Each digit corresponds to the number of colors of the objects in the picture. Emma saw a long corridor. She'd been walking for a while when she realized that the corridor was about to split into three passageways. They were signed West, East, South. She also saw this inscription on the wall. Which corridor should she choose? Emma tilted her head and looked at the inscription upside down. This way, it read South. That's where she needed to go. Soon, the girl saw three doors on her way. On the floor, there were three keys that could open these three doors. What is the biggest number of attempts she will need to figure out the key for each door? Six, three attempts for the first key and all three doors. Two attempts for the second key and the remaining two doors. And one attempt for the third key and the last door. Emma decided to go through the left door. And guess what? She ended up in the room with the armchair again. The man was there too. He asked her, Today is Friday. You need to do something 72 days later. What day of the week will it be? Emma understood it really fast, it would be Sunday. Look, 72 days equals 10 weeks plus 2 days. And 2 days from Friday, that's Sunday. The man was getting irritated. Well, and how good are you at math? Look at this sequence. What are the next two numbers? The next two numbers should be 20 and 28. There are two groups of numbers in this sequence. 11, 14, and 17, and 19, 22, and 25. In both of them, each next number is three more than the previous one. It means that in the first group, the next number is 20, and in the second group, 28. Then, the man offered Emma a bet. He said he would put one red and one blue marble in a box. If the girl picked a blue marble, he would let her go. But if she got the red marble, she would have to stay and help him around the house for a year. Emma knew that the man was going to cheat, because why would he take a risk like that? He would probably put two red marbles instead of one red and one blue. But how can she prove it? After thinking for a while, she managed to win the bet. How did she do it? Emma picked a marble and quickly put it in her mouth without showing it to the man. The marble that remained in the box was red. According to the rules, it meant that the marble Emma had chosen was blue. The man didn't want to admit that he had tried to cheat. Okay, I'm not going to go back on my word, but here's the last riddle. If you crack it, you're free to go. How can you turn six into an odd number? Emma didn't need to think much. She removed the letter S, which left IX. That's the number 9 in Roman numerals. And this number is odd. The man could do nothing. He gave Emma the documents and let her go. The girl was happy. Do you think she should pursue the career of a detective? <laughs>